Today we are going to discuss about the stress strain graph. Okay. In the earlier classes we studied what is stress and what is strain. The stress is the force per area and the strain is the change in length by original length or change in dimension to the original dimension. Also we say that what is Hooke's law. According to Hooke's law the stress is directly proportional to strain. Okay, these are the things we studied earlier. Okay, now look at these pictures. In the first picture, we are having a material. Uh, sometimes it is called as metal. It is iron. Okay, iron or whatever steel may be. That is, it is a metal. And... Then the second picture we are having wood and in the third picture we are having rubber. When we classify according to the strength, we can say that the metal have more strength than wood and wood having more strength than rubber. So for measuring strength, we have to apply some stress and we have to find the strain for that. Uh, for that, we are going to, uh, the experiment would be, we are going to do some experiment. Then consider a cylinder or a wire hanging vertically and we are all adding some mass M. And we plot or we measure the stress and strain of produced in the wire that is for mass m we are measuring the strain delta l and delta l by l and for the next mass we are finding uh, the stress and again we are uh, measuring the uh, strain etc then we are plotting a graph that is taking stress along y-axis and strain along x-axis. So we get the stress strain graph. The stress strain graph will look like this and this is our the stress strain graph. Since we are taking strain along x-axis and stress along y-axis we get something like this. It is different for is different for different materials different for different materials and we are going to analyze what is stress strain graph consider the figure and consider the region OA we can say that it is linear in shape OA is linear in shape it means the stress is directly proportional to strain. We can say that OA obey Hooke's law. O, the region OA obeys Hooke's law. Okay. Then the, the proportionality is maintained up to the point A. Up to the point A. So we call A as the proportionality limit. This is the first region. Then moving on to the region AB, we can say that it is no longer linear but it is curved. That is, it is not linear but uh, it is in the elastic region. That is, when we remove the mass, it will go to the original position but, in, uh, but not linear. But we can say that the point B is called elastic point called elastic point or yield point and the point beyond C. Then when we increase the mass beyond C, it will enter into the plastic region. It is entered into the plastic region. That is strain occurs permanently. Permanent strain occurs. So, up to the point B, we can say that it is, it is in 
the elastic region and after the point B, it enters into the plastic region. And the, uh, when we remove the mass at the C, at the C, when we remove and when we remove the mass or remove the stress, then it will not, it will not go to original position. It will not go to the original position. But it will take a new path called CF. CF. We call it as CF. New path and having a permanent strain and having a permanent strain then the point consider the point d at the point d we are having the breaking stress we are having the breaking stress or the maximum stress the material can hold is called the breaking stress or uh, the, at the point D, the, this is a maximum strength or the maximum load our material can hold. And when we in, further increase the mass or the stress, it will go to the fracture point or this is the breaking point and the uh, material will break down. Okay, this is the stress strain graph. That is, it is having a region OA, linear uh, relationship between stress and strain and, and A is called the proportional uh, limit and the B is called the elastic point and the C, it will retrace a new path called the CF and it is having a permanent strain and at the point D, it is the breaking point and at the point E, it is the fracture point. Okay, this is the stress strain graph. Then we are going to the next topic, the Poisson's ratio. Consider we are having a wire of particular thickness and it is loaded. It is loaded at the end and we can say that after applying the stress, the length increases is called longitudinal is called the longitudinal strain and also its thickness decreases that is called the lateral it is called the lateral strain okay so we can define as the longitudinal we can say that the change in length by original length and we can say that the lateral strain can be defined as the change in diameter to the original diameter. D is the diameter. This is the area of cross section of this wire. Then we can say that this is the diameter. The lateral strain it is a change in diameter to the original diameter and the Poisson's ratio can be defined by the letter sigma. According to Poisson's ratio, the lateral strain, the lateral strain to longitudinal, longitudinal strain is a constant. That constant is called sigma, and the ratio is called Poisson's ratio and the Poisson's ratio uh, is have a certain limit that is with the maximum it would be half and the minimum value is minus 1 that is Poisson's ratio exists between minus 1 to 0.5 this is the value of limiting value of Poisson's ratio. Now we are going to discuss about what are elastomers. We already defined what is stress strain graph. For example, for the rubber and like aorta, our blood vessel aorta, 
and uh, plastics okay then we are expecting a curve like this we are expecting the stress strain graph like this okay we can uh, we can say that it is not in the linear but it is an exponential it is the graph of aorta so graph of aorta is the elastic tissue it is an elastic tissue uh, that is carrying blood from the heart okay we can say that it doesn't obey hopes law then there is no well defined plastic region okay it doesn't have well defined plastic region example are the rubber iota etc these are uh, this can be stretched into a uh, certain uh, length okay these substances are called elastomers okay that is will not come to its original length for example rubber can be pulled to several times its original length and still returns to its original shape okay but like this our uh, iota our blood Uh, carrying tissue it can be uh, it will not have any plastic region or breaking region and and it is having well defined shape but it doesn't obey hooks such materials are called elastomers examples are rubber iota next we are going to study about the eye section girders in the figure we are seeing a railway track having a cross sectional shape it is in the shape of i can you say what is the reason for i section girders this type of construction material is called girders okay these are mainly used for building constructions railway tracks bridges constructing bridges in these areas we can see the i section girders can you say why it is in the shape of the letter capital i for that consider a uniform beam having rectangular cross section having rectangular cross section loaded at the middle and so that it will bend like this and it will bend like this because of the weight and we are having a depression denoted by the letter delta produced at the middle of the beam can be written as delta is equal to w l cube divided by 4 bd cube y where w is the weight of the load b is the breadth of the beam l is the length of the beam and d is the depth of the b and y is the young's modulus okay that is the depression produced at the center of the beam is directly proportional to cube of the length and inversely proportional to breadth and also it is inversely proportional to cube of the depth and it is also it is inversely proportional to young's modulus that is if we increase length one time the depression will be three times it will be three time increases and if when breadth increases depression decreases and also depth increases depression decreases three times it decreases three times also Uh, when y increases depression decreases so in this it is more valuable or efficient is the depth by increasing the depth we can minimize the depression in the uh, in three times that is we are going to make beams more depth that is this is the depth this is the length and this is the breadth okay and we are having beam like this but there is a problem in 
increasing the depth on a certain level. That is, in this area, we are having uh, some traffic or some load. Okay, then it is having a this uh, it is constantly uh, containing mass that is W. So because of that, there will be a chance of bending or the a beam will stretch or bend like this and this is called the buckling when force or weight is applied on the top of the girder it will bend like this this process is called buckling in order to avoid buckling we reduce some portion of the beam and it will like this we are removing some material in this area we are removing some materials in this area so that so that the beam should li look like the capital i that is why we are having a girder cross section is in the shape of i so this called i section that is why it is called I section girders. Okay, we are uh, using these in uh, in many constructions because of this we are having efficiency material efficiency. We are cost uh, economic. It is economical. It is economical and it is strength. This is having strength. And we are uh, when also when y increases, depth uh, delta decreases. So construction materials uh, should have a good quality of Young's modulus. So these are the uh, main features of the I section girders. We are having the pillars or the columns. The pillars or the columns and, and also we are having this is the pillar and we are constructing the pillar not like this but having the top side like this okay that is distributed ends distributed ends that is use of pillars or columns is also very common in building and bridges a pillar is is rounded at this is having a rounded end but the design of the bridge or building has to be taken in condition under which it will be function so uh, it also have low cost and long period and reliability of usable materials now we are going to discuss some of the important points in the chapter mechanics of solids. That is, the first one is the Hooke's law is valid only in the linear part of the stress strain curve. We, are, uh, we already learned what is stress strain curve, and this portion only the linear portion called OA part is having it's the it is obeying Hooke's law. Okay, only the linear part obey Hooke's law. The second point is that the Young's modulus and the shear modulus are relevant only for solids. Since only solids have length and shape. Okay, already we say that what is Young's modulus? Young's modulus is the longitudinal stress by longitudinal strain. That is linear stress by it is y is equal to linear stress by linear strain. That is, it is in the case in the case of wire, in the case of beam, we are having the Young's modulus. And in the case of areas or volumes uh, or what is having shape, something have shape, it is called that is having an angle change. The change in angle theta. It is, it is having shear modulus. It is having shear modulus. That is only for solids it exists. 
that is by Young's modulus and the shear modulus. Young's modulus and the shear modulus. Okay, but in the case of bulk modulus, it is relevant for solids, liquids, and gases. Bulk modulus exists for solids, liquids, and gases. Okay, then. Fourth point is the metals have larger values of Young's modulus than alloys and elastomers. Okay, what is an alloy? Alloy is a mixture of the mixture of metals is called alloy. For example, alnico. Example of alloys are alnico, brass. Uh, example of alloys, but pure metals, pure metals are having uh, larger values of Young's modulus. Elastomers, uh, we are already seen that the elastomers having the curve, stress strain curve like this. It is not obeying Hooke's law. So, metals have larger values of Young's modulus than alloys and elastomers. Okay, then uh, the stress, the stress is not a vector quantity. What is stress? That is stress can be defined as force per unit area. That is, if we apply a uh, weight on the uh, wire clamped in the one end, it will produce a force per unit area. It is, uh, but it is doesn't having any direction. That is, stress how no direction. No direction, only magnitude. Only having only magnitude. The unit is Newton per meter square. Okay, these are the five points we have to remember in the chapter Mechanics of Solids. That is the end of the chapter Mechanics of Solids. In this section, we are going to discuss about some of the previous year questions of GAE main that is from the chapter Mechanical Properties of Solids. Consider the question that is the speed of a transverse wave on a straight wire is given as 90 meter per second given the Young's modulus of the wire is 16 into 10 raised to 11 meter Newton per meter square. We have to find the extension of the wire over the natural length. That is, we are having a wire of length L, wire of length L and a wave is moving in the wire having velocity V and it is the length, the mass per unit length. We have to find the mass per unit length of the wire. And it is having the Young's modulus uh, 16 into 10 raised to 11 Newton per meter square. That is, we are given, that is, we are given the speed of the wave 90 meter per second. We are given the Young's modulus 16 into 10 raised to 11 Newton per meter square. Also, the length is the uh, is 60 centimeter, which is equal to 16 into 10 raised to minus 2 meter. And given mass, it is 6 gram, that is 6 into 10 raised to minus 3 kilogram. And area of cross section 1 millimeter square, that is about 1 into 10 raised to minus 6 meter square okay so uh, it is given that the uh, the wave that is a transverse wave the velocity of transverse wave can be given as root of t by mu that is what is t t is the tension in the string and mu is the mass per unit length this is a mass per unit length on squaring we get v square is equal to t by mu this is equation number one and also we have 
the equation of Young's modulus that is stress by strain. We have uh, stress by strain that is here the uh, that is force per unit area divided by changing length by original length. Changing length by original length. Here the force will be equal to the tension that is the equation becomes T by T by A and delta L into L equation number 2 that is we are uh, calculating T from the equation that is uh, on uh, crossing we get Y A delta L by A delta L by L this is the equation for uh, T this is equation number 3 substituting 3 in 1 we get velocity V is uh, V square is equal to T V square is equal to T by mu which is equal to Y A delta L by L what is mu? mu is the mass per unit length is mass per unit length that is we are cancelling the length and calculating for delta L that is we have to find the extension that is it is B square M by Y A that is B square uh, M by Y A on uh, giving the values that is 90 square into mass 6 into 10 raised to minus 3 divided by y 16 into 10 raised to 11 into a 1 into 10 raised to minus 6 we get the value in the as 3.03 into 10 raised to minus 5 meter but in the question this, uh, this answer is in the millimeter. We have to change it in the millimeter. That is about uh, meter 3.3 into 10 raised to minus 5 uh, can be converted into 3.03 millimeter. 0 0.03 millimeter. This is the answer. The next problem is about the uh, coefficient of linear expansion. Uh, we are having two different wires of length L1 and uh, uh, coefficient of linear expansion alpha 1 and that of another, uh, another wire having length L2 and uh, coefficient of expansion alpha 2. And we have to find the effective temperature coefficient of effective uh, temperature coefficient of linear expansion that is we have to find the total length change in length okay, okay. that is uh, we are having we have the equation delta L by L is equal to alpha T this is the coefficient of linear expansion alpha is the coefficient of, of linear expansion and T is the temperature L is the original length and delta L is the extension. Here we have to find the changing length of equivalent wires is equal to sum of change in length of each wire that is the total that is delta L is equal to delta L1 plus delta L2 that is from this equation 1 we are having uh, delta L is equal to capital L alpha into delta T which is equal to L1 alpha 1 delta T since we are having same temperature that is delta L2 alpha 2 delta T we are having same length that is L is equal to L1 plus L2 that is L1 
plus L2 into alpha delta T is equal to delta T will be taken out. Then L1 alpha 1 plus L2 alpha 2 that is we have to, that is cancelling delta T and we have the coefficient of linear expansion alpha is equal to L1 alpha 1 plus L2 alpha 2 divided by L1 plus L2 that is uh, equation option A is the right answer. In an experiment brass and steel wires of length 1 meter each with areas of cross section 1 millimeter square are used. The wires are connected in series and one end of the combined wire is connected to the rigid support and the other end is subjected to elongation. The stress is required to produce a net elongation of 0 0.2 millimeter. Okay, we have to find the stress that is force per unit area is the quantity we have to find and it is given that we have we are having a brass and steel of 1 meter each it is a wire of brass and next we are having a wire made up of steel and they are connected to the rigid support and having a force in this direction okay and it is given that Young's modulus of steel is equal to 120 into 10 raised to 9 newton per meter square and Young's modulus of brass is equal to 60 into 10 raised to 9 newton per meter square. Okay. Also we know that the Young's modulus is equal to F L by A into delta L. This is the uh, Young's modulus. That is, on applying the force, uh, on applying the force, the net, there is a net length L, there is a extension delta L here. So, delta L net is given as delta L brass plus delta L steel. We have the equation delta L is equal to F L by Ya and on giving this equation in this, that is, we are having F L by A A Y of brass of brass plus F L by A Y of steel. Since the force and area and length are equal, so we have to take it outside force per unit area and length. Length is about uh, 1 meter that is L is equal to 1 meter for each and uh, the area become and, and we have the area uh, 0.2 millimeter. Okay then we have 1 by Y of brass plus 1 by Y of steel and we are this delta net is equal to what uh, f by a that is length is 1 centimeter so 1 by brass uh, 120 into 10 raised to 9 plus 1 by 16 into 10 raised to 9 and we have delta l is equal to point net elongation we, it is given that net elongation is 0 0.2 millimeter that is equal to 10 raised to minus 3 is equal to f by a into this and we we, uh, we have to find the stress that is f by a that is f by a on calculating this we get 8 into 10 raised to 6 newton per meter square that is this is the value of uh, that is option c is the right answer this is the stress produced okay a rod of length l 
at the room temperature and a uniform cross sectional area A is made up of a metal having coefficient of linear expansion alpha per degree Celsius. It is observed that an external compression force, external compressive force is applied on the both ends uh, that it prevents any change in the length of the road. When its temperature rises by delta T Kelvin, we have to find the Young's modulus of the material. There are a lot of uh, information given. That is, we have the coefficient of expansion alpha and the equation is delta L by L is equal to alpha delta T is the equation number 1. Also, we know we have the equation Young's modulus is equal to the stress by strain that is F by A divided by delta L by L. From this we can calculate delta L by L is equal to F by A divided by Y that is equation number 2. Equating equation 1 and 2 that is the LHS of equation 1 and the equation 2 are equal. So we can write delta alpha delta t is equal to f by y a. That is we have to find the Young's modulus that is y is equal to f divided by alpha delta t into A. This is the final answer. That is D is the right answer. The elastic limit of a brass is 379 mega pascal. Watch it be the minimum diameter of the brass rod if it is to be support a 400 newton load without exceeding its elastic limit. So, a brass rod having elastic limit, having elastic limit 379 mega pascal that is equal to 379 into 10 raised to 6 pascal. And it is given a force 400 newton and we have to find the minimum diameter the di minimum diameter that is we are having a brass rod of diameter d and it is having particular length we are applying a force f we have within the elastic limit we, uh, we have to find the minimum value of diameter it can hold the uh, mass okay since we, we know that stress sigma is equal to force per area that is here area of the cross section is pi r square but we are uh, but we are given d value that is v2 d is equal to 2 r that is r is equal to d by 2 that is d raised to 2 by 4 and that is f divided by pi d square raised to 4 equation number 1 and next we have to set that we have sigma less than or equal to that is a maximum strength raised to 6 pascal that is at the elastic limit equation number 2 that is f by a that is equal to 4f by pi d square will be less than or equal to 379 into 10 raised to 6. That is, that is from this equation d square is equal to 4f by pi 379 into 10 raised to 6 and the value d minimum that is equal to this is the value d 
the minimum giving the values we get 400 newton divided by 3.14 into 379 into 10 raised to 6 that is equal to 1.16 into 10 raised to minus 3 meter that is the answer that is equal to 1.16 that is option C is the correct answer a steel wire having a radius a steel wire R is equal to 2 millimeter carrying a load of 4 kilogram from the ceiling. We given that G is equal to 3.1 pi meter per second square. What will be the tensile stress? Sigma. We have to find the stress. That is, we have the equation of tensile stress is equal to force per area that is equal to F by A that is M G divided by A that is the area of the cross section that is pi R square which is equal to 4 into 3.1 into pi divided by pi into 2 into 10 raised to minus 3 the whole square which is uh, given as 1 3.1 into 10 raised to 6 newton per meter square that is option C is the right answer. Consider the next question. Young's model line of two wires A and B are in the ratio 7 is to 4 A Wire A is 2 meter long and has radius R. Wire B is 1.5 meter long and has radius 2 millimeter. If the two wires stretch by the same length for a given rod, then the value of R is close to. Okay, that is we are giving wire A and wire B having length LA is equal to 2 meter and LB is equal to 1.5 meter and we have to find the value of R. Then we have the RB is equal to 2 millimeter. Also given that if the two wires stretch by same length for a given load that is delta L a is equal to delta L B. From the equation of Young's modulus, we can see that the equation delta uh, Y is equal to F by A delta L into L. And for from this, delta L is equal to F L by A Y. Here, it is circular cross section. So, we are having uh, the area by R square. That is, it is a general equation. It is, uh, we are calculating for separately. That is, we are having Y A by Y B is equal to 7 by 4. This is equation number 1. From equation number 1, we can say that F A L A divided by pi R A square y a is equal to f b l b divided by pi r b square into y b we have to find the r a square that is r a square becomes we are uh, having the same mass so we can cut the value f a and f b and that is RB square is equal to F A by F B that is into I A by I B into Y B by Y A that is equal to that is equal to this is uh, this is one this is uh, this is one that is L this, this is L A by L B that is two divided by 1.5 into 4 by 7 into 4 into 10 raised to minus 6 that is 
equal to 3 power into 0, 4 into 10 raised to minus 6 meter, then r is equal to root of that equation that is 1 power into 7 into 10 raised to minus 3 meter. This is the value of r a.